Welcome back to the finale of the Disturbing and Offensive Video Games Iceberg. Thank you guys all for your patience. You guys truly are awesome. In episode 4, we covered tier 5 on the Disturbing and Offensive Video Games Iceberg, and today we'll be covering tier 6, 7, and 8 all in the same video. I hope you're all prepared. Real quick before we start, I just want to say thank you guys so damn much. I never expected this series to get as big as it did, and to be able to talk to so many of you guys, and it's truly been an amazing experience. Thank you all for liking, subscribing, commenting, and watching my videos. It truly means a lot to me. Huge shout out to you slash not ask questions on Reddit for creating this iceberg. But enough talking. Let's get into the video. Psycho Rhythm is a visual novel from Japan. Five scientists died in an explosion while conducting an experiment. The main character, Samba Hiroshi lost both of his parents in the explosion at the age of 12. He was taken in by a neighboring Imino family. As he aged, he lost memory of the explosion and watching his parents die right before him. After graduation, he starts working as an assistant detective in the Imino family. His first job is known as the Left Eye Case, where over 60 murder victims were found with their left eye gouged out. The Amino family finds the clues and are killed while investigating an abandoned port warehouse. Samba, the only one left, is set to reveal the conspiracy behind this case and seek her ESP's organization that manipulates unknown power with an unknown purpose. Very little information is available on Heart of Sophiliamon, despite the game having many, many screenshots available online. According to NewRetroWave.com, the game was a hit in Japan, in a flash-in-the-pan sort of way. There's no information available about the plot of the game, only screenshots. Screenshots depict a decaying man, his skin completely dead, his teeth yellow, his hair hanging on by strands on the side, completely gone on the top. His skin is full of wrinkles and is sharply outlining his bones. In another image, we see a woman ripped apart. Half her face is missing. The side of her stomach is gone, leaving only blood and organs. Her arm is merely hanging on by a bone, nothing else to support it. In a close-up image of the woman's face, we see her right eye completely hanging out, the only thing supporting it being her optic nerve. Clearly for the release date, and even now, these images were incredibly frightening and disgusting. Kimo Mimi Farm is a hentai series of games. There are two games in the series, Freestyle ARPG and Pirate Girl SRPG. The first game, Freestyle ARPG, follows a girl named Eldo, though her name is customizable, as monsters start to take the land that she once lived in. She is now tasked with defeating all the monsters that reside in her home. The game features three different difficulties, however, there is no game over present in the game. The player keeps making progress even if they fail. The game's description also states that there is a day and night cycle, and following that, a menstrual cycle. To add on to the list of features, it is possible for the player to get pregnant and to have children. The following game, Pirate Girl SRPG, follows an unnamed girl. According to the description, there is no story in the game. The game focuses on taking your character on a pirate adventure. The game states that, just like the last game, there is no game over. Instead, H scenes, or sex scenes, are presented during failures. The genres listed for the game state that it is a pregnancy, impregnation, milking, childbirth, egg laying, restraint, and tentacle game. Seiya no Uda 2 is a sequel to the original Seiya no Uda. The game, however, is not from the original developers. The game was made by a fairly professional Russian team called N-Studio. The game is a huge improvement over the original Seiya no Uda, increasing the number of endings to 12 and adding a new character. The story of the game occurs directly after the ending of the first game, showing how greatly the world has changed and what happened to all of the characters and the rest of humanity.
Plant Girl Frontier is a hentai-based searching RPG. The game follows a girl that was able to equip a legendary ring at a castle's enlistment ceremony. She then is able to give power to three girls who are descendants of a race called Plant Girl, and they set off to find Dungeon. The game allows for players to train during the night time, leading to HC. In the genre and categories of the game, it states that the game is a clothed girl, lovey dovey slash sweet love, internal cum shot, consensual sex, and virgin female type game. Nisei Taxi follows the player playing as what appears to be the devil. The devil is running a taxi service, however, like the porn series, it is a fake taxi service, with the implications of hitting on and having sex with women who step inside the taxi. Wilmer of the Drill-Faced Goddess was a game made for the Retromania event, an event in which multiple developers create a game in a limited amount of time. The game starts off with your character in front of a cave hewn from the wall of a great mountain, far to the east of your village. The character is there because a dream told them about an extremely powerful artifact known as the Hecabone. Yet something about the cave disturbs the player. The player cannot look directly at it without pain. The player is greeted with two options, leave or head towards the cave. Choosing to leave will cause the game to end. You have won, it says, but in a way, you have lost. If the player chooses to enter the cave, the player has a chance to die early, but it's easy to survive. The player is then sent into a bizarre world full of weird discoveries and creatures, plenty of ways to die. George M Games are a series of games made by the user George M. Due to the fact that these are multiple games, I will only be able to go over one of them. This video, we'll look into water in the pipes. Let's just click the download link here and... Oh. It's a RAR file. Okay, okay, no, no big deal. We'll, I'll just install RAR and uninstall it later. Alright, now that that's out of the way, all we have to do is open up the files, scroll down to the game, and... Oh. Yeah, I had a lot of trouble playing this game, so all I can do is open up the files and view the images. But, you know, that's that's no big deal. I'll just be incredibly condescending to the game for putting me through the pain of installing WinRAR. This game is in a weird art style, where it looks like a five-year-old druid. I believe that's what they were going for, but looking at some of the sprites... Why are they pixelated? Some of these, I can't tell what the hell it is. Like, obviously this one's a snake, but please, tell me what that is. The only information on the story I can get is from the description, which says, Hello, this is an exploration game. Hint. Pick up the VHS tapes. Mail Movie Quest has rarely any information online. Screen caps for Mail Movie Quest exist online, showing a collage of images. Various images show various different people or objects, such as one image of No Face from Spirited Away. All of these images, however, fail to represent a story, and due to the only download link I could find being on a Chan site, well, yeah, I'd kind of like to keep my personal information, thank you. Moving into Tier 7, we're seeing a lot more obscure games that barely even exist anymore. Some of them are lost. The Devil's Subjugation Story is an RPG originally developed in Japan for a contest. The story follows a fish, the world's mightiest warrior, who is trapped by his rival and turned into an old man. As a blind and deaf man, he gropes his way into his rival's hideout in search of a way to return to his original form. 
Desert Wars was an RPG maker game that took place in a dystopian world after a meteor fell onto Earth and wiped out 98% of the population. The world was turned into a desert quickly after the fallout, and those who remained fought each other and tortured one another. Due to the lack of laws, the world was made more sick, deadly, and violent than it had ever been before. Ana Haikyu Genshi Gushi Ike Nai Gozo Sekai was a Japanese visual novel. Not unlike many of the previous porn games on the list, the story features a girl going out to try her best to have sex with as many men as possible. At least, according to what I've read on Reddit, that is. According to you slash not ask questions, the creator of this iceberg, translating the page quotes, a romantic AVG where a girl who tries her best to get fucked. It's not the usual VIP. It's serious. Unable to find much information on Marumu Takuma Forever RPG, I was able to find information about who the game is based on. The game was based on Mamoru Takuma, a Japanese mass murderer who killed eight people in the Osaka school massacre in Data Osaka Prefecture on the 8th of June 2001. Based on the information in the title of the game, I can only imagine what kind of game this must have been. Based on the subject matter, the game would have been similar to the Virtual Man games. A set of games mentioned earlier in the list in which the player plays as the perpetrator of various famous school shootings. Sakuranbo Elementary School is a group of developers who made sick and twisted games. These games included titles such as Arc Toucher Fantasy and How They Feel on the Inside. Completely disgusting. These games were advertised as a molesting ADV that's a lollicon's dream come true. These games have no reason to be made. They're completely disgusting. Not much information exists on Asahara's ambition, yet the name may sound familiar if you watch part 3. That is because Asahara's ambition is based off of the same man shown in Kamikuishiki Village, the leader of the cult that committed the sarin gas attack of the Tokyo subway in 1995. Despite limited information on the game, it is clear that the game would have the player conducting the same disgusting actions. Nevada's Blade is a reimagination of the Nevada Tan incident, more famously known as the Sasebo Slashing. On June 1, 2004, an 11-year-old schoolgirl, only known as Girl A, murdered her classmate, Satomi Mitarai, who, at the time, was only 12 years old. Satomi Mitarai was murdered during the lunch hour at Okubo Elementary School. After realizing that the two students were missing, the teacher stumbled into the body and called the police. Girl A confessed to the crime and repeated, I am sorry, over and over to the police. Originally, Girl A mentioned no motive for the murder, but after some time, she confessed that Mitarai and she had been arguing due to comments left online, claiming that Mitarai had slandered her. Girl A was ruled to institutionalize Girl A, ignoring her age due to the severe crimes she committed. Fun Game is a game available on Game Jolt, created by Mikostas. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to open the game, so I was unable to see the storyline or gameplay. However, digging into the files yielded some interesting results. The game seemed to have most likely an anime girl as the main protagonist. Judging from the backdrop pictures, the game seems to be a visual novel. The backgrounds are all distorted in some way, and in the images titled Creepy, the background is almost completely black. The image Creepy 2 also holding texts that state, I wish to die, over and over again. Side note, you slash not ask questions claims that he put this game in because he found the title to be very odd and interesting. And finally, tier 8. The final tier. 
Lots of games on tier 8 are unknown, forgotten games. Some are unknown to even exist. Some can only be found using the Wayback Machine, yet research is so hard that it's almost impossible to find these games. Note from the creator of the iceberg is that not all games on tier 8 are going to be as disturbing or offensive as games before. Tier 8 was said to be reserved for more unknown and mysterious games. Taiwan 2001, the lost game made around the 2000s and early 2010s. The game was heavily inspired by another game featured earlier on the list, Hong Kong 97. The story is almost exactly the same as Hong Kong 97, starting with the opening statement, The year 2001 has arrived. A herd of fucking uglies are rushing from the mainland. Crime rates skyrocketed. Therefore, the Taiwan government called Wang Xiao En's relative Wang Xiao Min for the education plan of the mainlanders. Min is an etiquette expert, reformed all 1.2 billion people. However, in mainland China, there was a secret project in progress, a project to transform the captured Wang Xiao En into an ultimate weapon. The game takes place in 2001, in which citizens of mainland China are invading Taiwan, bringing crime and chaos to the scene. Main character, Wang Xiaomin, is brought in to quote, reform the mainlanders. The game featured heavy political messages as the main conflict stemmed between the People's Republic of China, ruled by the Chinese Communist Party, and the Republic of China, initially ruled by Kuomintang. Hellraiser was a cancelled 1990 NES game based on the film Hellraiser, originally released in 1987. The game followed the main character who was trapped in Lemarcon's configuration, the film's adaptation of Pandora's box. The player would have to find ways to manipulate the outside of the box in order to find a way to escape. However, the Cenobites, mysterious white humanoid creatures, would change the configuration of the cube on the outside to affect the level layout. If the player managed to escape successfully, they would then have to reverse the box in order to defeat any enemy that escaped. A title that I won't even try to pronounce and instead will just spell it out, Cross NRMLI TLLU Cross Emerged, was an RPG Maker 15 Ace game made around 2013. In the tags of the game, it was known as Parade, however the demo version was called Pringles. The player would play as a triangular shaped character who would explore interesting places that look heavily inspired by games such as LSD Dream Emulator, with combat mechanics similar to many RPG games such as Final Fantasy. Apparently, the original creator of Parade commented on the iceberg chart. They claimed that the game was a standard RPG maker game until it would glitch out a bit resulting in odd graphics. And for the third time on this list, Am Shinrikyo, the Japanese cult, is mentioned again. The real Am Shinrikyo games are very similar to the last two that include the same cult. The game would have the player perform terrorist attacks and eventually end with the player committing the Tokyo Subway terrorist attack. Lunatic Gaming Chain Game was an old PC RPG game developed in an unknown time frame. Little to no information was available online regarding the game. However, I was able to download some of the assets used in the game and view them. From the available assets, it appears that the game would have taken place underground in a cave. The player would have had to fight monsters based off of real animals, evident by names such as the name Dedripi Monster 39 and Dedripi Monster 43, given to images of monsters that look similar to a frog and a snake. The player would have also met a lot of characters as evident by the face set tiles displaying multiple characters. As for the story of the game, or the gameplay, there's no information regarding those. Skunk Girl Plus Maid is a lost RPG maker game that is incredibly sexual. Reminds me of so many other games on this list. The plot, according to the site, states, You are Skunk Girl. You have always wanted to be a pumpkin. The legend says the king can grant wishes, make him happy, just like many other games on tier 8, it is unfortunately lost. Berserker was a cancelled game made by Sigvater, the same person who made Muslim Massacre. 
Almost no information is available as to the contents of the game, but based on their previous project and the name of the game, it is evident that the concepts would have been very graphic and racist in some way. User Catmits on RPGMaker.net described Murder Dogs perfectly. According to Catmits, Murder Dog was the PAL-only sequel to the hit Japanese game Hayashi no Gaia, Crystal. Development team Kegomi attempted to make a game which would corner the burgeoning western market. However, the game's contents and atmosphere were considered too horrifying at the time, and it never saw widespread release. Some of the characters include Murder Dog. The protagonist Murder Dog is a high-ranking officer in the Cactus City Police Force. A copy of the original design document makes references to him fighting a large-scale drug operation. However, the actual gameplay seems to consist exclusively of Murder Dog arbitrarily killing and eating random Cactus City residents while spraying blood from his eyes and emitting unsettling 8-bit squawking noises. Poor translation has left the game's plot undecipherable, but we do know that Murder Dog vehemently drags on an animated cigar before speaking and that his comments made frequent reference to a blazing wheel. His character design is primarily centered around two glowing blood red eyes, which Kagomi apparently believed would humanize the character. Another character includes Sazan Atari, referred to in the game manual as Murder Dog Top Pooch Companion. This character is completely absent from the actual game, apart from an animated game over sequence where she removes her dress while turning into a skeleton. Some commentators believe this section to have a stolen verbatim from Fallen Kagomi hentai game, Cockroach Whore. An extra character, named Black Danger, is the chief antagonist and end boss of each stage. Black Danger is primarily depicted as a murder dog sprite painted black and covered in animated flies, although the game manual inexplicably used for his headshot a poorly scanned picture of the cover to Grace Jones' nightclubbing album. The appearance of this character in-game will automatically destroy both the game cartridge and the console it is played on. Some extra additional facts about the game include, when Murder Dog returns from the dead in level 2, he was originally meant to quip, hot enough for ya. The translation mysteriously replaced this with a string of swear words. Entering the Konami code at the title screen plays a cutscene where Murder Dog kills and eats an old lady. Murder Dog cartridges contain specific amounts of incredibly toxic chemicals, leading to some to suggest their existence as part of an aborted chemical weapons program. They are consequently illegal in every country. If Murder Dog remains still long enough, he will drown on the blood which pours from his mouth and face. Bunny Messiah was an early 2000s lost RPG maker game. According to you slash not ask questions, the player would control a bunny girl during the apocalypse, killing every zombie she can. Eventually, later in the story, she would be worshipped like a god. Evil Resident was a lost fan game series of Resident Evil. The games weren't very serious and tended to lean towards the comedy side, typically mocking or parodying some of the earlier Resident Evil games. The Evil Farming game is unknown to even exist. According to those who claim to have played it, the game was in the style of a game like Stardew Valley or Harvest Moon. The player would have to take care of their farm every day and make friends with those in the town. However, the game had a dark side to it. In the beginning of the game, the player character brutally murders their wife. The player must then hide their wife's body, all the while living out an ordinary life. The police would come interrogate and search the player's house, causing them to have to move their wife's body. The game is very reminiscent of the horror novel by Stephen King, 1922, in which the protagonist's wife threatens to leave him with their son and move to the city. Upset at this news, the protagonist kills his wife with the help of his son. The game was believed to be a hoax after searching for the game yielded nothing until more posts started occurring on different subreddits describing the game, asking if anyone else had played the game. Many state that they played it years ago, yet remembered it so vividly. A larger YouTuber named Wang created a video describing the game and the search for the game. 
So I will link that in the description below. Um, hey everyone, so we reached the end. And I just want to say thank you. When I originally started this series over a month ago, I didn't expect that it would gain the amount of traction it received. I expected at most around 100 views on my first video, if I was lucky. Well, it turns out luck really was on my side because instead of 100 views, it gained over 5,000. That was, and still is, mind-boggling to me. I never thought 5,000 people would want to sit down and listen to some random 16-year-old on the internet talk about video games. And the support that you all have given me is absolutely insane, from the Chorus Aria to Benny Jackson, from Leo Paschal to Uhawk 3 To everyone who's subscribed, liked, commented, anybody who weighed in their opinions and supported me. You guys have lifted me up so much that I can't even put it into words. What I'm trying to say is, thank you guys so much. As I move into different projects and work on more content, I'll never forget what you guys did for me throughout this series. Thank you. And I'll see you all next time.